a small area of support right below us the price could um you know pretty much bounce at and i'm going to take a little screenshot here and throw it out on discord for all those that are or do follow the discord community okay um you can catch this trade and see it on this all right all right welcome back to the channel everyone out there on youtube this is futures trading with mike thank you for tuning in and watching today's video uh this is going to be a live recorded session of me trading the e-mini s p 500 yes the e-mini s p 500 this is the market i love to trade uh daily and you know to everyone out there who currently sus uh, has subscribed to the channel and is a follow the channel you know this is what I trade, okay? Uh, if you're a first-time viewer, welcome aboard, and hopefully we can get you to subscribe to the channel by simply clicking on the red button down below that subscribe button. So please do so by clicking the red button to join the channel, okay? As well as make sure to, to click on the bell next to the uh, subscribe button and turn all your post notifications on so you never miss one of the uploads here on the channel. All right. Again, this is a live recorded session, trading session of me trading the E-mini S&P 500. So we're going to take a look here to see what we have going on on the higher time frame. I am a little late looking at the market this morning. Had a few things I need to take care of prior to. Um, okay, so what we have, we can see is price is moving up towards a uh, area of supply sitting at the top, right? Okay, we have price breaking lower, making these lower lows and lower highs. And as it continued to do, doing so, it made and created a uh, area of uh, supply resting right up here on the 60 range chart. Yes, I, tra I trade based on range charts, okay? Uh, if you're not familiar with those and you um, um, a, use the NinjaTrader platform, then it is um, a chart style type that you can actually um, use to trade from. A lot of traders trade from minute, you know, minute or time-based charts, which is like, you know, five minute, 15 minute, 30 minute, and some people trade tick and volume charts. Um, what I, what, you know, what I've come across and seen just through various other traders out there um, that range based charts are something that's not, um, I guess maybe um, a lot of traders don't have access to it on different uh, other platforms. So I'm not, you know, sure of, of all the various platforms that range charts or range uh, style charts are not available to. But, you know, I've been using it since day one on NinjaTrader and I've never used any other trading platform. So I'm not too privy about other uh, trading platforms if it's available or not. But this is why I, I trade um, the range based charts, because to me, it, it just looks cleaner to the eye and I'm able to follow it. I mean, you know, I've been trading for 10 plus years now and probably going on about 11 years now. So um, and to me, it's just easier for me to follow price action. Trade what works for you, okay? Whatever whatever uh, chart style works for you. But anyways, getting back to what I was saying, yes, we are um, retracing back to a, a, a area of supply resting up here on the higher time frame chart. And then I'm going to scale down to my uh, pretty much my entry chart to kind of see, um, you know, what's taking place in today's session so far. Because like I said, I have um, gotten to the markets late this morning, okay? So I'm just looking at my charts right now, so please, please forgive me. But anyways, making lower lows and lower highs the last few days, okay? So the structure's been to the downside, okay? You can just basically follow this with your eyes and see that we've been channeling to the downside, pull back to supply now, okay? So looking at the uh, lower time frame, um, I would be interested in taking shorts if we could, you know, possibly pull back a little higher. Well, I'm interested in taking shorts anyway, okay? Because of the market overall direction on the higher time frame is telling me that I should be taking shorts. Uh, looking at higher, you know, look at, looking at the market structure, uh, looking at the structure of the market right now. Um, overall, okay. Now, we did break structure on, you know, right here we had a high sitting up here in this area here from um, the 10th, which was, uh, well, pretty much Friday, okay. So uh, we broke this area structure right here to the upside, making these higher highs and higher lows. So, uh, but because we have a, you know, the overall, look at the bigger picture. I mean, yeah, I'd be interested in taking shorts because we pull them back to this area of supply, right? Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't take long entries as well. So we do have supply up here, and then we have an area of demand resting right here. We made a uh, new high on the push up here, pull back, making a new high. So, yes, you can take uh, longs when we get pullbacks, you know, to areas of, the, of demand down below. So right now, because I said, you know, we we're tracing to this area of supply, I'm, I'm more so interested and possibly taking some long entries, but we'll see what unfolds here, okay? So I don't wanna keep rambling on talking about, um, 
you know, shorts and longs and things like that. I'm just kind of looking at the overall direction and it's telling me that, yes, shorts, if I get up here, which we're close to tapping into, and maybe some long entries down here, okay? Because we have supply and then demand down here. All right, so let's see what happens. All right, I'm taking a long entry, excuse me, not a long entry, a short entry right now. Price tap into this area right here. So um, I'm interested in taking this short. Put a few points here down to the downside. So we'll see what happens. Put my first contract right there. And uh, we'll kind of see what happens or unfolds in the market now. Um, as you can see, when price is making a uh, run to the downside here, uh, making these lower lows and lower highs, it retraced back had a big basically a big swing to the downside so we're getting um a pullback into this area now okay so price push lower okay making a new low right here pull back new low right here then it pulls back retraces break structure to the upside and then breaks lower to the downside okay taking out this this area structure right here so um i'm interested in seeing price is going to reject this area right here because we're above the high, a high volume area right here and push lower at this point just to come down and test, you know, support or area below us, okay, where price could actually, you know, um, stop it or, or pause it, okay? All right, so we have a gap right here. You guys always hear me talk about, you know, um, price leaving behind an area or a gap, whatever the case is. Um, and we had this, this area to fill here. So price is pulling back. Um, when it made this move to the downside here, you can see, these are what I call supporting swings within a bigger swing here. So as it made this move to the downside here, it, it, it left this area to fill here. So um, this is supply resting right here. And as price got up there, I was waiting for that and waiting for some rejection here. And we kind of got this little zipper, uh, you can call it right here. And getting some rejection here, price is wicking out. Whenever you kind of see um, things happen like this or unfolding, when price is wicking, wicking, and, and really not closing above to push lower, then more than likely it's, it's, it's rejecting that area. And it's going to force itself to want to push lower, as you can see right here. So hopefully we get, um, we kind of get filled here. So I'm going to do something like this right here. Because we do have this little small area of support right below us. But price could, um, you know, pretty much bounce at. And I'm going to take a little screenshot here and throw it out on Discord. For all those that are, or do follow the Discord community. Okay. Um, you can catch this trade and see it on Discord as well. So come on, come a little lower. Okay. Hopefully, uh, hopefully we can get filled here on this little trade here. We got a little, a little um, gap too, as you can see. I'm trying to get filled here, guys. Let me pay attention. A little gap here right below us too, um, as price pulled, push to the upside here, making this little swing to the upside. Okay. No, I'm not sure if I should go ahead and ah, try to take. I think we're gonna push. We should push a little lower here and test this area. But you know, price can do what it wants to do, though. We're out here at thir uh, 4130, so we'll see. I got my first profit target at 131. Excuse me, at half. So I might take out around this area. Price kind of bouncing here, so we'll see. Uh come on. Not too much activity going on today, just kind of just um, pushing up, making higher highs and higher lows. I think I'm going to put my first contract right there. Bring this one a little lower. If we can hit here at this, if we give us three points, if we can get filled in this first contract. Okay, come on. Fill the order there. It's hit it once, twice, keeps pulling back from it. Okay. All right. Feel the first contract. I think I'm going to go ahead and, okay, three, three, three points is good for me. Okay. Uh, it may come down here and test this 30 area, but that was the first trade for today. Yep. Yeah, and so as you see, like I said, price come on down here to around a 30 area. So I would have been safe on both contracts, you know, if I put them at around a 30 area, but that's fine. I mean, you know, depending on momentum in the market and how the market is actually moving, you know, it, sometimes I'll go ahead and take out and just take what I can get because we have a high volume area right here as well, right here where this area support is at. And price, 
you know, I've said this plenty of times before, it likes to move from an area of a high volume area through a low volume area to a high volume area, okay? So when it approaches a high volume area, most times I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and get out um, because it can bounce or reject from that zone. Not saying that it can't break through it, but in most instances, instances it's gonna pause um, or, you know, before it decides what its next move is gonna be. All right, so let's see what happens next. So the name of the game here is just basically being patient and waiting for the right setups. I mean, you know, you've got to understand, like I always tell, I always stay in my videos. I'm not gonna tell anybody how to trade, but look, you're not gonna be um, profitable if you don't know how to follow market structure. You know, if you don't know how to read the, the market structure, you know, what's going on in the market. I mean, you can see, like I showed you on the higher time frame, the market was making lower lows and lower highs, right? Well, and I, and I took a short entry, right? Because I said I was looking for shorts because we were approaching an area of supply. All right. Um, so, you know, price made this move to the downside right here, right? This big swing to the downside, like I said, right? Well, there was, it created areas of, there were areas of supply. Uh, and I like this area here because of this gap right here. So when I saw an opportunity right there at the rejection, price is wicking right here and not wanting to push any higher, I took the trade to go short, okay? When price starts to wick like this and it's not closing above, or, or closing into the supply zone. This was the supply zone sitting right here. Um, let's go ahead and, and, and kind of draw this right here. Um, let's see. Da -da. Give me a second here. I'm going to paint the picture for you. Right here, we can say this area right here. Okay, I'm going to draw it out here. Boom, look what happens. Taps into it. Can't close into or close inside of pretty much... Um, you know, with the green candle closing above, in a sense, closing into the supply zone, it starts to form these wicks at the top right here on the 12 range, blow it up. All right, that's the signs of rejection right there, okay? And when I look below, price moving to the upside right here, right? But what did it leave behind to, here too? It left a gap. Aggressive buying coming to the upside, left, leaving a gap. And I said, okay, price rejects its zone here. It's probably gonna come back and try to fill this little small little demand area here. And that's what it does pretty much. I mean, it comes back down, fills the gap right here, all right? So that's what I, I'm looking for. Rejection to add an area where there is um, high probability supply zone. And then below us, we have a little small demand zone where there's a gap left behind. See, I saw the rejection with the wicks there. I took, took, took my shot going short. Okay, so price could actually um, pull back right here, okay, to this area and, and bounce right here around uh, 37 or maybe a little lower, 36, 35 area. Um, and I'm saying that because it broke uh structure back to the upside right here you know right around here 41 42 area it broke this little swing high here okay as it put put uh moved higher so this is an area where price could actually bounce at around 35 so i may take an aggressive entry here at around uh maybe 36 35 area very quick entry we'll see if price gets there so i don't know we'll see i may put a limit order there Back to this high volume area as well. So just gonna test it out there. Um, because we we you know I see what's going on. I see what's 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 happening here. Yes, we have supply resting above. I'm just looking for a quick scalp and price test this test this area here. Um pulls back to this little this little zipper here, little swing here, little aggressive buy-in, pull back, you know, because it did break. Um back into this area right here. it took out this this high right here around 42 so we'll see Let's see if we can get filled here all right i put a limit order there first contracts in so um i think i'm just gonna scalp real quick here hopefully so far, I'm only in with one little contract here, so uh, it can't come lower though. So that's the thing too; it can push lower before it pushes higher. And I'm being very aggressive, not even waiting for a candle break here. But this is—it uh, just makes sense to me to take this little small little scalp right here, um, because price is, like I said, as it pushed higher here, made it swing to the upside, took out structure to the left-hand side of the chart, chart, which I just shown. And this is just a pullback to this key area, of small area of demand right here. But, you know, I'm being very mindful because we do have that big area of supply off of the um, 60 range chart. So we'll see what takes place here.
I'm just going to scalp for maybe a point and a half here. Point and a half here and see what happens real quick. Prefer to see it come down a little lower. Looks like it may want to now. Uh, yeah. So we'll see what happens here. I'm trying to enter with the second contract. Contract off of this area here. Um, yeah, it looks like it may want to. I'm just going to um, just scout this area real quick on these two contracts. Very small little scalp here. And maybe trying to push higher and test that supply zone off the higher time frame. But, you know, just going to wait and see what happens here. Very little, very quick scalp if we can get it here. Hmm. So before people get to asking, yes, I did not take the break of a candle. It's a very aggressive entry. Price pulling back to this small little zone here. I'm just trying to get scalp it right back up right quick for a few for a few ticks. Okay. Uh come on, baby. Look at it. Come on. I may just take out right here. Just scalping it real quick. Come on, baby. Ah. Uh -uh. Pulling back on me. This is just for a quick little bounce. Off this, this zone here. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to get it or not. Okay, we got filled there. Good. Second little small entry there. Again, this is price breaking through, breaking back above this area here at 40, say 42, because price makes structure, you know, it, it was making this big swing to the downside. You know, it, it made a low here, broke back up, took out structure here before pushing back lower. Okay. Then it came back, started making these higher highs and higher lows, taking out structure back into this big this swing to the downside here. When it broke that area there, I just look for a quick pullback to take it a uh, little quick pullback to this little zone here, this little gap right here. You can see the price had to come down and it's going to feel um, this is aggressive. Some buying coming out of this area right here. Just time to take it back up to a little the highs right here for a scout for a point, a quarter, point and a half, whatever the case is. But I knew I was very aggressive, not looking for a candle break because look, and this when price pulls back to this little small area like this, you can't if you look for a candle break. I mean, you, you already, you're already going to be back at the highs right here. All right, not too much going on. Um, I'm only taking two small trades today. And so I'm going to wait to see. Maybe I'll take a, a trade or two this afternoon. I'm not sure. Um, but right now, the market is just being it's very sluggish, uh, moving to the upside. And we're just making these, these higher highs and higher lows. So right now, on a lower time frame, we are bullish to the upside. Um, looking at the lower, excuse me, on the lower time frame, uh, we are bullish to the upside. But if you look at the um, higher time frame, uh here we are you know in this downtrend to the downside here approaching this area supply like i said once before but we did break structure right here to the upside forming a uh high and then a pulling back and making a higher high here so we are um uh bullish to the upside uh even on the on the the lower i mean excuse me the, the, the higher time frame you know after breaking this area structure but look like i said you know, I can still you can still have a short bias because we are pushing or pulling back, we're tracing back to this area of supply now on the um, higher time frame here. This 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 zone right here. So two little small scalps uh, again entries, and right now I'm just gonna hold off because I mean it's just not doing anything. Maybe around two o'clock this afternoon. Maybe it'd be you know I'm sure there'd be some other opportunities unfolding. Um, but as of right now, I mean, there was probably a little long entry right here on this pullback to this, 
to right here around 36 or 35 area, somewhere right there. Go long, back up to the tops up here. But, you know, you're scalping for a few points there. I didn't take it. Um, it just, you know, I, I want to look for a, a, a clean trade. This could have been, but you had to have been very aggressive because there was no candle break. Time you got, but by the time you got the candle break, you're back up here to the top up here already. So maybe on, on a different chart, you know, it may look a little different. Um, you know, maybe on a five minute or some type of tick chart, whatever the case is, um, it may slightly look different. But right now, I'm just going to wait to see, you know, what's going to do. Is the market going to, you know, fold down now and start breaking structure to the downside? That may provide an opportunity. You know, it may, uh, it just made a high here. Today's is today's high. It may come down here and um, let's see, break structure below this area here, below 35, and then maybe look for a pullback, or it could continue breaking. Excuse me, breaking structure to the downside, and we could look for a pullback. So, but like I said, I mean, we are approaching that area of supply off the higher time frame. So, um, you know, we're only within a few points away from that area, three points or so. So price can, you know, possibly reject where it's at now and want to want to push lower or so. But we'll see here uh, what's going to unfold. But I may go ahead and close the video out here. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and, um, you know, show everyone if you're interested in joining our Discord, because people ask all the time how they can join the Discord. Uh, this is the Discord community here. We have over 900 members now strong on the Discord here. So if you're interested in joining, all you have to do just look down in the description portion of the video. Again, in the description portion of the video, there's a link there that says for, for the Discord. Click on it, and the Discord is free. You can invite yourself in. We are future traders here on this on this channel here. So if you trade futures, you're welcome in um, because most all the information that's shared and discussed or talked about on this channel uh, on the Discord server here is um, you know related back to futures. Okay. Um, we don't trade options or, or Forex. Um, at least I don't. Maybe some of the other traders possibly do. Um, you know, they probably trade, but some may trade futures and, and stocks or or options or future, uh, excuse me, or um, Forex as well. I don't know. But this channel is geared so as more so for future traders, okay? So if you're interested, just click the link down in the description portion of the video and bite yourself in free of charge. There's two channels here. We have the trading floor. As you can see, the trading floor here is where we share um, our entries on a daily. So basically during the session, you know, traders take screenshots of their entries and share it. Um, found that it's helped, you know, other individuals out as well that are learning to trade or maybe already know how to trade. And, you know, they understand why traders took or uh, put on positions at certain zones or certain levels, whatever the case is. So you're more than welcome to share your trades. You know, that's what the trading floor is for. The general chat channel is exactly what it is. For anyone uh, that is interested in um, sharing information, asking questions, whatever it may be, relate it back, to, relate it back again to the futures trading. So, if you're interested in doing so, um, then you know you can come over and and ask away. You know, maybe you're a new trader and you and you need some more information uh, pertaining to the future markets because uh, you're interested in starting to trade futures. So, don't be scared to ask. I mean, we all started from somewhere, so. This is our Discord community. You know, you're welcome to in. Like I said, um, just find the link down in the description portion of the video and come join us today. All right. Um, appreciate everyone who's tuned into the channel. Again, if you are a first time viewer, not much activity today. Um, typically, you know, most days I take more trades than this, but I didn't start trading trading until right around 11 o'clock or looking at the market until 11 o'clock. But again, um, if you are a first time viewer, please take the time to go ahead and click on the subscribe button down below that red button. Join the team here at Future Trading with Mike, as well as make sure to turn all your post notifications on. Click the bell next to the subscribe button and please do me the biggest favor of all. Drop a like. Click on the like button. I appreciate everyone and uh, who's tuned in and watched the video today. Sorry I wasn't able to capture or take a. Uh, you know, a few more trades, but hey, the market is what it is. You know, it, it's some days it, it, it works out better than other days. And, you know, we get good trade setups right now. The market's just bullish to the upside and look at the lower time frame. So we'll see what happens. I mean, maybe I'll be able to capture something this afternoon. All right, I'm taking a quick short, uh, quick short scalp here. Just back down to these lows. Hopefully take, to take out these lows right here. Um, very quick entry right here. So
see what happens here quick short price made a low here pull back lower low now it's pulling back uh, didn't take out this little small level right here that it made to the downside and just looking to get filled real quick on this trade i think i'm just going to move my tp up one tick here and try to get filled on this entry here we are right right we are right here at this low here so price can bounce but i'm uh one tick away okay come on all right pull back it actually uh, it hit my now one tick away from the tp i'm looking for it to clear this low right here i right, look at look at it okay come on baby Let's see what it does here. Okay, one tick away. Still one tick away. All right, just got cleared, hit the TP there. Okay, so we're good on that trade there. Third trade today. I'm just scalping. This is into the afternoon session now. Um, as I mentioned, I may take a trade or two. So we just uh, look like we're trying to break this low here. So, uh, and the reason being is because we rejected that 50 number up there, actually, and we also had. There was an area of uh, supply resting right up in this area here as well, uh, above this high volume area. But we got the rejection. Once again, like I said, you know, price taps into a supply area or demand area and starts throwing these wicks like this. That's a sign of rejection. Okay, came up there, hit that supply area right here. Okay, and wick at, we wick there. See that red candle right there? Do a wick, pull it back or push down. Went up again for a second test there. Do a wick. Also, we have confluence with a half number there. Um, so, you know, once it re rejects that area pretty much, you look for the break of the candle to the downside. Once this red candle here clears to the downside, you can pretty much take a short, um, you know. But uh, I didn't, I wasn't looking at the market at that time. I wasn't into, you know, I stepped away from the computer. And, uh, but looking at what's going on here, it, after it did that, it pushed down at a low, another, uh, a low, lower high, lower low, a new low here, pulling back. Rejecting to go to go higher. I went short for a quick scalp right back down to the lows here. Okay, so quick entry there And that's probably going to do it for me today. I haven't I didn't take a lot of trades You know not much going on in the market. It was just today other than he's making these higher highs and higher lows um, And once again also uh, if you pay attention, what did I say? What, what, what do we have here supply tap right into it to the tick see that price did not close pretty much um, Pretty much Inside this actual box, it, it did close in a box here with this bullish candle here, but it didn't really close completely inside the box. If I if I you know drag this out some, um, it's still now this is on a higher time frame, so we're not looking for rejection off of you know the the higher time frame. It just tapped into this area. So um, what I'm looking for is price to reject like it did when I showed you those uh, wicks on the lower time frame, the 12 range. See how it wick in this area here? Okay, take a look at it here. So it taps into the supply on the higher time frame. All right. What do you have on the, what, what do you also have? A gap. See, price is going to fill that area. It comes back. So it's filling the gap, taps into an area of supply off the higher time frame. Again, we're looking for a short opportunity where we take it. All right. So there you go. Boom. Taps into it as well here. So we had supply not only on the 60 range, but there was supply on the 12 range. It filled this gap right here. Uh, I'm sorry, not right there. Right here. Okay, and we have the half number, which is, um, you know, more confluence there. You just look for the rejection and take your, take, take your, uh, you know, your shot going short. And that's, I, I missed that entry because, like I said, I wasn't in front of the charts. So I waited for it to see what price was going to do from there. If it was going to, you know, make a new low and uh, follow that by a new new low pretty much. But what it did was it did, it made a, a new low here. But price could have just made a new, could have pushed down, broke structure right here, making a low and then turned back around, pushing higher. But what it did was it made a low, lower high, lower low. So that kind of gives me confirmation on the lower time frame, the 12 range chart that we could be, you know, kind of uh, bearish to the downside now. I'm not sure. I mean, especially with all this upside bullish, um, you know, momentum to the upside. But on the higher time frame, I mean, you can kind of play in between in a sense because we are, if you look at things here, um, supply here, demand down here. So we're kind of playing in between. Uh, two zones there. So it just depends, you know, you just got to trade what you see and pay attention to price action. Okay. But outside of that, that's all I have for you guys today. Three trades for me. Um, I didn't do a lot of trading. I didn't start my trading until 11 o'clock and then I stopped 
you know so just scout and i'm done okay i'll look and see what happens tomorrow for sure and i wish if you're trading i hope you hope you guys are having a a safe trading day and always remember you should be green every day okay that's the goal is to be green um even if you break even okay that's better than than, than taking any kind of drawdown or any kind of loss okay protect your capital in the end take care i'll see you guys in the next trading video and that's it i'm out